good deck gang there is a whole lot of steam deck news not to mention pc gaming news to cover this week but the thing that has been on my mind the most lately is the sorry state that pc gaming is currently in with the exception of the steam deck there's a lot that's gotten us to this point and there are very tangible solutions so don't worry i'm not going to keep it negative i'd much rather focus on how we can get out of this rut and the fact that i do believe the worst is behind us so let's make that the main topic for today in fact there's sort of an unlikely hero in this entire story so stay tuned right before we jump into that i want to let you know that steam next fest ends today but you should still have access to hundreds of demos even after next fest is done if you don't know steam next fest is quickly becoming my favorite event in gaming this is an event put on by valve that happens about once a quarter where they encourage developers of upcoming games to drop playable demos this is probably the biggest one yet with lots of amazing demos so i'm going to be using the trailers of those games for the backdrop of today's video. Keep an eye on the badge in the top right for the name of the game and any other information I have. And once again, if there's a title that interests you, go ahead and see if there's still a demo available on Steam, even though Next Fest is ending today. Most games keep their demo up well past the end of the event. Also, by the way, if you like these videos, make sure to like and subscribe since that helps this spread to more people. So let's talk about the state of PC gaming right now. This segment is motivated by what feels like a fever pitch and online discussion around PC gaming. I'm going to put up some examples on the screen while I talk about this, but one main inspiration, for example, is a thread and Resetera titled, Is the State of Big PC Releases Making PC Gaming Less Enjoyable for You? And that thread is making some waves. There's also a lot of chatter on Twitter about the subject. And in general, I think this is all being driven by a series of big releases that have had less than ideal PC ports. This is not a new problem in the gaming space, and it sort of comes and goes in waves. And those waves usually coincide with new console hardware. I can come up with a few reasons as to why that might be, but either way, it's definitely something I've noticed. We've had to go through bad ports of games like Saints Row 2 and Star Wars The Force Unleash to come out the other side to get great ports of latter generation games like Metal Gear Rising Revengeance and Tomb Raider. Even solid ports that came early in the 360 life cycle like Batman Arkham Asylum were unfortunately marred by some poor choices like the use of games for Windows Live. Ironically, the PC port of the original Dead Space from 2008 is not a particularly good port. We just have really good workarounds for its problems now. But like I said, we pushed through this and we started to get really great PC ports. Even Japanese publishers began to take the PC platform seriously, and we saw an explosion of awesome ports from Capcom, Sega, and Square. We're now going through a similar stage of growing pains, and for a few reasons, I believe the worst is behind us. I want to say that this all kind of started with Elden Ring. It was one of the first really big games where the PC port was severely hampered by Shader Stutter. Shader Stutter is not the only problem in modern PC ports, but it's easily the biggest. It's the result of shaders being compiled at the last possible moment when the game is actually rendering the shader for the first time. This is as opposed to compiling the shader beforehand, for example, when you load the game for the first time. The reason this isn't a problem on consoles is because shaders have to be compiled for your hardware. On consoles, your hardware is the same as everyone else that owns the same console, so the shaders can come pre-baked as it were. PCs, on the other hand, are snowflakes. Everyone's setup is unique enough that it would be unreasonable to expect your shaders to come pre-baked. Of course, if you're a supporter of this channel, then you know that there is one major exception to that, the Steam Deck. You can reasonably have compiled shaders targeted at the Steam Deck since they will work for anyone with a Steam Deck. That's why a game like Elden Ring played incredibly well on the Steam Deck at launch, even though it was generally a poor experience on PC. Still, in the case of the Steam Deck, it's Valve that is managing the cache of pre-compiled shaders as opposed to the developers themselves. That means it only really works for games on Steam and it stops working if Valve ever decides to stop supporting the feature for some reason, not that they would. More recently, we have games like Forspoken, Dead Space, and even the big update to Witcher 3 that launched with serious day one issues on PC. Issues that are typically preventable. Not just preventable, but Valve has gone through the effort of fixing the issues themselves after the fact, sometimes with game specific code that fixes just the single game that people want to play. Of course, these fixes typically only benefit Steam Deck and other Linux players. So launch after launch, we have to gird our loins and hope that the PC port of the game will be serviceable. And as PC gamers, we're used to waiting for games to be fixed either by the devs or by the community. But just because we're used to it, 
doesn't mean it's right. This fever pitch of issues from AAA games has led to one of my favorite videos that Digital Foundry has ever put out, which is saying a lot, don't you think? The video in question lays out 13 ways to end lousy PC ports in 2023, as the title itself says. Of course, the number one thing addressed here is shader stutter, and Alex actually gives a number of ways to fix this. He proposes that the developer can build the shaders the first time the game loads, like in Uncharted The Legacy of Thieves collection. That build can take 10 minutes or more, so if you as a developer are worried that such a long build time is just a bad experience for the user, then you can just let the user choose whether or not they want to do this like Modern Warfare 2 does. Alternatively, you can go for a synchronous compilation like Star Citizen or a mix of pre-baked and async like Spider-Man. In addition to Shader Stutter, Alex proposes that developers should provide more info on what a graphical change does and how it affects performance. He gives a few great examples of games that already do this, like Days Gone and Spider-Man. He also suggests that PC ports should have configurable field of view, should include refresh rate and resolution as separate options, and should include a variable aspect ratio and variable frame rate. There's a lot more, and you should go watch the video if you somehow haven't already, but there are a few points I want to make here. Number one, good PC ports are obviously possible, and Alex lays out exactly how to accomplish that. Number two, the flexibility of PC is great, but we could also stand to have some standardization around conventions, especially as it pertains to graphical options, but not just that, right? I think that basically every PC game on Steam should support cloud saves, for example. That's a no-brainer to me. In any case, the final point I want to make in reference to this video, number three, is that this video made it clear to me that there is an unlikely hero in the past year of PC ports. Sony. While Sony has had a misstep here and there, their PC ports in the last two years have not only been stellar, but this video is proof that they should serve as a model for other developers of PC ports. Days Gone, Spider-Man Remastered, God of War, and Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection were all referenced in this piece from Digital Foundry and with good reason. These are some of the best PC ports in the modern era, and what's more is that they all work well on the Steam Deck too. By the way, I've had it on my mind for a while now that I'd love to make a checklist like this for Steam Deck games. A checklist of what is needed to make the best experience for games on the Steam Deck because I think that goes beyond just a deck verified system. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see something like that, or better yet, let me know in the comments what sort of things you think all PC titles should have. Stuff like Steam Cloud Saves, FOV Sliders, or Steam Input Support. Alright, while we're on the subject of PC ports, I wanted to talk about some games that were shown during the last Nintendo Direct that will be coming to PC because some of these are going to be great on the Steam Deck. First up is Etrian Odyssey Origins Collection coming in late May. This is a collection of remasters for the first three titles in the dungeon crawling RPG series Etrian Odyssey. You'll be able to pick up the individual titles for 40 bucks a piece or the collection of all three for 80 bucks. I think this is going to work well on the Steam Deck because one of the major features of this series was mapping out the game yourself using the in-game mapping tools. It was made for the stylus on the DS, but this could work really well with the trackpads on the Steam Deck. I'm really looking forward to finding out. Similar to that, Ghost Trick Phantom Detective is another port from the DS era. Naturally, it too utilized the stylus, and so I think it's going to be a good fit for the trackpads. Outside of that, this is a classic game that not enough people played, so I'm glad to see a port to as many platforms as possible. Of course, Minecraft Legends is getting a PC port that comes in late April, and one of my most anticipated games, Sea of Stars, is coming to PC as well. Notably, if you own a Switch, you can play the demo for this now, but I was a little disappointed that it didn't get a demo on Steam. Hopefully, we'll see that before launch. Of course, if you're into RPGs, then hopefully you already know that Octopath Traveler 2 is coming to Steam in less than two weeks. There were also games like We Love Katamari Reroll, Harmony, The Fall of Reverie, Tron Identity, Paranormal Sight, The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo, and Blanc, all of which are coming to Steam too. Plus, the Castlevania DLC for Dead Cells coming in March, and not to mention Have a Nice Death and Disney Dreamlight Valley, 
which are already both on Steam in early access. Overall, it was a really good Nintendo Direct for Steam Deck games. Of course, the Switch exclusives look promising too. I can't wait to buy them and try them on the Steam Deck. It seems like a number of people have already tried Metroid Prime Remastered on Steam Deck. Metroid Prime is one of my favorite games of all time, so I'm super excited to try this too. Linux Gaming Central has a video where they show off some gameplay in Yuzu, and it's looking pretty damn good for the segment they showed. Even with that, it's still early days and we will get updates to Yuzu, and as we do, we may see some increased performance. Let's do a quick check on some other news. There were some SteamOS updates to the stable channel. If you missed it, there was a really big update on February 1st. This included a convenient checkbox in the launch option dialog that tells Steam to remember the option that you picked. And if you want to see the launch options again, you can just go to properties. It also enhanced the virtual keyboard by adding up and down cursor keys and the ability to move the keyboard itself. In any case, Valve just released another update to the stable channel on February 10th. This made it so that the virtual keyboard now remembers its last position if you moved it. It also adds fast jumping by letter in your library, so that allows for quicker navigation if you have a bigger library like I do. And if you're in desktop mode, I also like that you can now press Alt Enter to enter big picture mode. Speaking of Valve updates, they announced that they are shipping a full-sized update to Team Fortress 2, the first in years. It's going to include new maps, among other things, and they're doing an open call for Steam Workshop content. This is pretty exciting since people have been clamoring for an update to this game for a long time, and it goes to show that community outcry really can work. On the subject of live service games, you probably have heard about the death of various live service games like Rumbleverse and Knockout City. I'm pretty disappointed about a couple of these. In particular, I've had really good things to say about Knockout City. It's really fun and extremely approachable. That said, at least I can say that the devs of Knockout City are doing right by their community. They're going to provide a free, private hosted server version of Knockout City that can be used to play the game even after the official servers are shut down in June. According to their FAQ, quote, the private hosted server edition of Knockout City will be available for free as a standalone download for Windows PC in the coming months. Players will be able to download this separate version of the game to host their friends or join someone else's server. We'll have more details as we get closer to releasing this. So yeah, look, I'm just gonna say it. In the midst of several live services shutting down, only EA is doing what we want all games like this to do, and that's to provide a version that the community can use well after the game's death. So yeah, kudos to EA. In other news, Lutra status support for Itch.io. This has been a long awaited feature for me personally. I have hundreds of games on Itch.io and I'd love to play this on Steam Deck. To be fair, the Itch.io app works just fine on Steam Deck, but I think it's easier to manage my library with apps like Lutris and Heroic. So yeah, I'm really happy about this. As far as games go, The Last of Us has been delayed from March 3rd to March 28th. Not a bad delay and I'll take it. As we've seen, Sony has been the model for PC ports, and so I have no doubts that they will deliver. Like a Dragon Ishin releases in a week from now and has already been verified for Steam Deck, Dead Space received enough updates that now it's been labeled playable for Steam Deck by Valve, and recently Bioshock Infinite and Callisto Protocol received patches that were aimed at compatibility for Linux and Steam Deck. You'll love to see it. For my part, I've spent a lot of the last week playing a bunch of demos on Steam Deck, I may do a video about what I've been playing, but for now, I'm going to recommend you take a look at Void Train, System Shock, After Image, Grim Guardians, and Rusted Moss. Those are all bangers. That gang out. Goodbye!